Hi everyone, I'm Catherine, the artist behind Bigelow Fine Arts. Come colour along with me on these lemur frogs from Fragile Worlds. I do like these more realistic pages, but they can be daunting and a lot of work to make look more realistic. I aim to break it down and work things up one leaf at a time. So grab those greens and let's colour this up together. I'm moving onto the blade of grass and I'm filling it in with a base layer of May Green over the entire blade. This doesn't have to be super smooth, but it shouldn't have any harsh lines or other marks that will stand out later. I am for now avoiding the center vein until I figure out how dark I want it to be compared to the rest of the blade. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps keep you informed when I post new videos as well as join in on the color alongs. I have palettes and timestamps and a Patreon post, so go check that out if you want the whole list of colors. Subscribing is the best way to keep up with the color alongs. To add in more colour, I am coming in with a light layer of the permanent green olive over the whole blade and blending the two greens together. I bring in the earth green and test it out as a potential colour on this grass. I do the same with the juniper green, adding both colours to where the blade bends down and would be darker. I go through with the juniper green and add in a layer over most of the blade to blend in more and add in a touch of shading and dimension.
I come back in with the earth green to finish filling in the blade, mostly where the shading would also be. With the earth green yellowish, I add in a layer over most of the blade, avoiding the top of the curl where it would be lightest. The blade in the back doesn't really have a sharp curl and wouldn't have as bright of a highlight. I bring back the May Green to blend in all the colors together and begin darkening up the non-highlight areas. And finally the shadows. I come in with the sepia and begin adding in the shadows, definitely under where the blade is curling over. I also add in some shading to the top where it is curling away from the light at the back and the front of the blade where it is curling away from the light. I add in shadows for the drop of water as well as the snail. If you've made it this far and have enjoyed coloring along with me or just watching this leaf come to life, I'd appreciate it if you give me a like and subscribe to stay informed of when I post more videos. It really helps me out. Check out my blog posts on Patreon. I have a short write-up of my palettes and a list of the chapter breaks, and they're available for everyone. If you have any questions or page requests, please leave them below or reach out to me on social media. I put a list of chapter breaks in the show notes, as well as a list of equipment I like to use. If you use any of my affiliate links, it really helps me out without costing you a thing. I post three times during the week, and subscribing is the best way to stay in the loop. To darken up the shading and bring up the contrast, I go over the sepia with some chrome green oxide to darken as well as blend out the edges into the rest of the leaf. Some of this layer is just a light blending layer, while in other places, like around the drop of water or under the curl, I am coming in with more layers to darken up the shadows and bring up the contrast. I am careful to not get too close to the highlight, but I also want to make sure I am blending into the edge of the highlight so I don't have a sudden transition from dark to light. In this case, the transition should be gentle following the gentle curve of the blade of grass.
I bring back the juniper green to add in more depth to the blade of grass and to smooth out the color. I'm also trying to make sure I am filling in the tooth of the paper, getting rid of any little white dots of paper still showing through. More chrome oxide green as I go through and again darken up the shadows and bring up the contrast. I know I say it a lot, but contrast really is key. One way to see it is to take a picture on something with a small screen and look at it. The tiny screen sometimes gives an idea if the contrast is enough or if more is needed. I come back in with more sepia to keep working up the contrast and darken up where I can. I finally fill in the center vein with some earth green yellowish as well as add in a layer over the highlight and most of the blade so I can better blend in some of the colors and fill in the paper. I add in lighter layers over the highlight and more or heavier layers over the darker areas of the blade. Not too much pressure as I don't want to damage the tooth of the paper or cause marks on the pages underneath.
The last thing I do is bring in more sepia and darken up the shadows even more. I really want them to be dark, and I know I never get them dark enough, so that is one reason I keep bringing it back in. A touch more may green, and that is it for this grass. Thanks for joining me on this lemur frog today. Let me know below or on social media if you colored along. I'd love to know how you did. I want to thank you all so much for coming along and joining in with me on this coloring journey. I appreciate all my subscribers and look forward to more of you joining in and coloring along with me. Please like, share, and subscribe to help that happen. Until next time, happy coloring.